Good morning, everybody. My name is Nadia Bobinska. I am Open Data Expert and co-founder of Open Data Lab Ukraine. And uh, I have an honor to be a moderator of this session. It's about open legislative data opportunities and the best practices. And I am very glad to have such great speakers with me to talk about open legislative data, to talk about the challenges, about the best practices, about how to do open legislative data in your country. And we will discuss us, uh, how open legislative data could help fulfill OGP commitments in each country. We will try to give some recommendations to parliaments, how to open data to PMOs, how to uh, influence and how to make parliament uh, do open data. And as you know, uh, one of OGP main spheres is access to information and technology and innovation. In the intersection of these two main aspects of open government is open data. And if we are talking about parliament open, parliamentary openness, we are talking about, also we are talking about access to information and about technology and innovation. And we are talking about open legislative data. Legislative data which is provided in open data format, which is easy to, uh, to, to for programs, for machines to read this data, to reuse this data, they should be accessible, they should be consistent, and they should exist in any case. And we will discuss these questions with uh, our speakers, and we will talk about uh, how this data could be used by civil society organizations, by parliaments, by governments, and uh, we have a representative of parliament, of government, of civil society organization, and of um, uh, steering committee of open government. And partnership. And the first, uh, the first uh, presenter I want to introduce is Carlo Marchetti. He is head, the head of Information System Development uh, Department of Italian Senate, and he had uh, an experience in, um, as program manager in IT companies, and he is uh, responsible of the management of parliamentary acts in electronic format, as well as of the management of internet website in Italian Senate, and Internet portal and open data portal in Italian Senate. And he will speak about open data, open documents, and why Parliament should open data. Tell us, please. Thank you. Can you hear me? Oh, thank, thank you very much, Anja. Um, that, that's um, an honor and a pleasure to me uh, to intervene here and to give the greetings of the Secretary General of the Italian Senate. I'm a member of the administration of the Italian Senate, so I'm not a politician, and I, 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 I work in the IT department where, where, where I head the Information System Development Office. I will spend a very few words on what Tito is doing on OGP before entering the details of the, of the presentation. Uh, as you probably know, now Italy is in, is in the steering committee of OGP. We renewed the action plan. The government is updating the, the action plan and submitted the action plan to a public consultation. And over the very recent days, we added as a parliament, as the chamber of the parliament, I mean the Senate, we had an addendum on the initiative that Senator Pagliari has been describing yesterday on public consultation and the petition. Um, this is also to say that the, 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 the topics I'll be discussing are not included in the action plan because we started open data, working on open data and open documents since the 2011. And, and we have quite uh, experience, I'd say, on, on the topics. Uh, next slide, please. In this slide, I just put a few figures to, to, to give you an idea of the dimension of our chamber. Uh, it is an elective chamber uh, with 315 uh, senators and five life senators. There's an error here. Uh, we manage uh, overall 1,300 political staff, and uh, we are 600 administrative employees managing the, the, the whole, uh, the, the whole uh, system. Our department is composed by 37 internal employees. Uh, and overall, the website um, offers to citizens 7 million resources. When I say resource, it can be a page or it can be a PDF document. 
because we gather in this website the history of the parliament starting since 1997 as for the current shape and then we have also we are also publishing all the historical acts of the history of the republic starting after the war we also managed 250 uh, applications uh, and uh, uh, that, are, uh, that, that are running uh, over two data centers. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in, the, in the next slide, um, uh, I will slide. not sh uh, yeah. show you something from our website, uh, but I want to show you the application uh, of our uh, open data uh, and uh, of uh, our uh, open documents. Uh, what is uh, going on in the country, uh, what PMOs data. and companies uh, are doing with our uh, open data. Uh, Next slide, please. Uh, These are the web pages of the uh, Open uh, Parliament uh, website. Op the uh, open uh, Parliament uh, website, uh, which means Open Parliament website, is run by a PMO whose name is uh, Open Polis. Um, uh, in which I would say uh, are working very good friends uh, of, our, uh, of our department, of, of our parliament. We, we got friends over the years because they were asking us for publishing information on, first on the website and then as open data. And uh, in, in, in these screens you can see what they do with this information. They publish each and every uh, votes expressed during each sitting. They publish uh, uh, information on uh, senators and in particular, they published uh, all the votes they expressed, all the acts they presented, all the amendments they voted for or they presented, and uh, they also they can do also something that we can do on our website. For instance, they can say uh, they, they can actually state on the website when a senator expresses a vote dissenting from his political group, which is not allowed on the, on, on the website of, 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 the, of the chamber. They can say when. Um, uh, they, they can do a hit parade. They classify um, uh, MPs and senators according to a productivity index. They say who is the, the best one uh, over the year or, or over the legislature, uh, which we can do on our website because we, we, we cannot fix a criteria to say what is the most productive um, legislator uh, in Italy. And they also publish each and every document in a public format. And people can go on the website and comment the the, the, the document and comment part of the document, propose uh, amendments, modification to the, to, to the document on their website. Next slide, please. This is what um, some companies are doing with open data, with our open data. There is a company that gathers our open data, the open data from the Chamber of Deputies, and uh, content from social network, and builds websites for politicians. And they sell it at a very low cost these websites to, to, to politicians. That's, that's very interesting. It's a quite intelligent application of open data under, the, the, the com, uh, under the, a company point of view. There is another application available on the App Store uh, that um, can be used by citizens to express uh, likes and dislikes on the actions. Uh, uh, taken by, by, by politicians. There are research centers working with our open documents, uh, doing research on language, on semantics. Um, uh, there are five or six uh, universities working, uh, using our open documents on the our Next slide, please. How do these guys um, achieve these uh, uh, objectives? How can they uh, access our information? Next slide, please. They, 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 they gather this information, they take this information from a portal. The, the name of the portal is dati.senato.it. On this portal, we uh, publish, in using linked open data standards, all the information of parliamentary activities since 1996. Overall, the, the, this portal uh, offers access to 45 million LOD tri triples. That means a lot of stuff. Uh, every single vote, every single election, every single bill is a is a triple. So there is a lot of information available on, 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 this, on this portal. This information is available not only as linked to open data, 
це не тільки як лінк до відкритої інформації, але Відповідно, Схема для репрезентації XML. This is the roadmap. I will limit to say that we are working on, on this topic since uh, 2011. The first deliverables were available to people in 2012. And all over the time we have been working with governments, with governments and with PMOs to define standards and to set the priorities together. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your intervention, it was very interesting, and I want to remind you that Interparliamentary Union also has its recommendation for Parliament to develop the open legislative data policies. First of all, it's just to develop this policy according to your national situation. The second one is to launch some open data portal. And uh, we want to know uh, why we should use this open data, and how we can, we can use this open data, and what kind of data data sets should be published primarily and uh, why they should be published pub and how they can be used. And this question I addressed to Mark Rich, he is chief executive of my society, one of the best organizations which uses uh, open data and which produces products uh, on the base of open data. He joined uh, my society uh, in uh, 2015 and he, is, uh, he has uh, an experience as a uh, consultant in technology and design and uh, he is working with open data and government and parliament and uh, tell us please about open data and usage it by civil society Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Nadia. Um, so my society has been working in this space for about 14 years. society uh, today I'm going to talk about the parliamentary and democratic aspects of our next slide. Uh, next slide. Okay. 
So my site is a not-for-profit, um, uh, so we're not of government, we sit outside government, but we have uh, an evol a constantly evolving relationship with governments of different size and scale. And our mission is really to both invent and popularise digital tools that give citizens influence over power. So what we try and do is we not just create the tools themselves, but we make sure we get the tools in the hands of the people who can benefit from them the most. Людям, які можуть отримати найбільшу користь so in the UK, uh, our, our high, our biggest sites are services like Fix My Street, where you can report graffiti є, or get potholes fixed, so very отже, much kind of focused on local government. Uh, what do they know.com, where we uh, effectively run a freedom of information влади. portal for uh, uh, the UK with about three, nearly 400,000 FOI requests made in public to over 19,000 public bodies. И, and uh, one of the sites I'm going to talk about today they work for you, it's effectively a parliamentary monitoring site, and I'll come on to explain why we built the site, how it works, and how we've taken that learning and used it around the world. Next slide. So we operate in 44 countries worldwide. We are basically 27 people based in the UK, mostly developers. But all of our work internationally, we work with partners. So we don't try and we operate, or we support support parliamentary so monitoring sites uh, extensively uh, through Sub-Saharan Africa and South Africa Assembly, Mesolendo.com in Kenya, uh, also uh, Vakrazem in Zimbabwe, Shine Your Eye in Nigeria and so on. So we have, a, you know, again, we are not running those sites at all, we provide the technology and the support and our partners, uh, the NGOs on the ground, provide the local expertise and they run the services day to day. Next slide. So from our own research, uh, we are very self-critical, and the, the, the civic technology sector uh, of which we are part is maturing. Uh, and through our own research, we effectively determined that it, it's just not reaching enough of the people who could benefit from these services the most. These services often cater more to those already comfortable dealing with government and authority. So it's really incumbent on us to better understand the user needs of underrepresented groups and people who maybe uh, aren't used to, you know, or wouldn't feel they have the ability to maybe pick up the phone or speak to their elected representative. We try and, you know, a big imperative for our work, especially over the next couple of years, is to take the services we've already developed but find ways to appeal or to serve these more underrepresented groups as well. So they work for you.com. Monitors the work of the UK Parliament and effectively you can put in your postcodes and you'll find out information about how your MP actually voted and more importantly it's what they vote means within the wider context. So we take official information and the Hansard information from Parliament which is the written record of what's actually been discussed. Uh, and we provide e context and meaning, context, and we gather together different smysl, votes over time uh, and, and group them in topics and themes to make it easier for people to understand uh, how you how ran, of what your MP actually believes on a particular topic. Uh, for non-expert users, for ordinary citizens who aren't e used to uh, dealing with the, the intricacies of Parliament or they maybe don't understand the specialist language or the Legal aspects, uh, parliamentary proceedings are often recorded. This gives Отже, це, чесно кажучи, просто тієї самої англійської, але простіше ми пояснюємо, і це допомагає обмінюватись простіше інформацією. Здається очевидним, що необхідно об'єднувати певну інформацію за темами, але така тематична приналежність не завжди настільки очевидна. Скажімо, якщо Brexit взяти, то, напевно, це широка тема, яка об'єднує там 10-12 окремих тем, і ми також показували інформацію, як де можна перевірити, як місцеві представники тієї чи іншої громади голосували з цього питання. Також ми працюємо з парламентом, тобто в Британії, як пан Мод вчора пояснював, 
Британія непогано працює у напрямку розвитку цифрового врядування і розвивається парламентський вебсайт. І також це впливає на представників громадянського суспільства. В сенсі ми повинні постійно адаптуватися до змін, які впроваджує парламент. Тобто, якщо парламент щось робить, щось, що ми раніше робили і робить на належному рівні, то ми просто відмовляємось від цієї функції, а якісь функції з'являються навіть. І ще два слайди пропустіть. Одна з наших задач нещодавно ми працювали з фокус-групами з молоддю, аби розібратися краще і зрозуміти, що вони очікують від цього сервісу. І ми з'ясували, що люди переважно переглядали таблиці голосування, ділилися цим в соціальних мережах. Тобто ми вивчаємо поведінку соціальну і потім розробляємо інструмент, який дуже легко використовувати. Тобто просто сфотографувати на екрані цю табличку, потім ділитися через соціальні мережі. Це один з прикладів тієї роботи, яку ми проводимо. Я дуже коротко скажу про політиків. Якщо ви є політиком, а вас тут багато, то, напевно, є якась інформація на нашому сайті про вас. І ми намагалися структуровано представити інформацію про всіх національних політиків у всьому світі, власне, з 233 країн і територій. Крім 12, але там є свої. І, власне, це така мережа автоматичних процесів, коли розроблені, просто сама система копіює інформацію, офіційну інформацію з парламентів, потім збирається ці дані і представляються в певному форматі, в форматі відкритих даних. Це важливо, тому що якщо є послідовні якісь дані, то можна розробити певні інструменти, які можна використовувати в усіх країнах. Там, скажімо, якщо вас цікаво, скільки жінок в парламентах світу, власне, зараз це досить складна задача з'ясувати. Я вже сказав, 3,8 мільйонів біографічних довідок є в нашому ресурсі. Також ми впроваджуємо зараз великі проекти, де ми інтегруємо ці дані в дані за принципом ВІКІ, і ми працюємо над тим, щоб ці дані були відкриті, структуровані, щоб можна було набагато простіше оцінити ці дані. Поінформую вас, що тижня десь у світі проводяться важливі вибори. Знову ж таки, на веб-сайті ми повинні взяти це до уваги, переглянути там, скажімо, списки діючих членів парламенту. І що простіше парламент опублікувати цю інформацію, тим простіше нам її генералізувати, підсумовувати і підтримувати. І також ми використовуємо моніторинг інструменти для моніторингу роботи парламенту, тому що раніше необхідно було місяцями працювати, щоб розробити спеціалізований веб-сайт. Тепер отакі прості моніторингові веб-сайти ми можемо створити дуже швидко. Інші представники громадянського суспільства, вони можуть використовувати ці дані і організовувати свої і кампанії, або використовувати їх в інших сегментах своєї роботи. В Україні також ми знаємо про партнерів громадянського суспільства, які використовують ці дані. І я сказав, що доступні дані – це означає, що можна проводити дослідження, якось їх аналізувати. І, безумовно, наша інформація може бути корисна для експертів, для дослідників, і такий аналіз може допомагати відповідати на великі виклики, великі питання. 
Там виводити щось спільне, що об'єднує ті чи інші парламенти, чи представника в цих парламентів, чи аналізувати ставлення парламентів до різних питань, податкових питань, скажімо, чи навіть процедури голосування в парламенті. Тому що у нас зараз є інформація не лише про нинішніх політиків, але і про тих, які існували в попередніх скликаннях. Тобто історична інформація, це теж дуже важливо. Тобто, коли люди, скажімо, приймають якісь офіційні посади там в уряді, важливо знати їхню попередню історію. Чи політики, скажімо, змінювали свою поведінку в сенсі голосування після того, як вони отримали певне фінансування чи перейшли на якусь іншу посаду. Це теж цікаво відстежувати. Тобто, такий ресурс спрощує для людей роботу і дозволяє простіше отримувати доступ до даних, які їм необхідні. Дякую. Дякую, Марк. Дякую, Марк, за те, що ви сказали про те, як можна використовувати відкриті дані. Як ми можемо зумувати основні дані, повинні, що мають публікуватися, це дані про членів парламенту і дані за результатами голосування. І ось тут ми сидимо в сесійній залі, де власне ці дані і виробляються. Тому що кожен виступ, кожна питання, кожне голосування, кожен законопроект – це дані, дані, які мають використовувати парламенти і організації громадянського суспільства, і сам уряд. Тому що ці дані також дуже важливі для процесу прийняття рішення. І у нас ще є один орган, який виробляє дані, це уряд. І ми хотіли поговорити і про це, як ми можемо використовувати дані і забезпечувати підхід, співпраці, спільний підхід парламенту та уряду. Марк Крич, виконавчий директор МАЙ-Сесайті, він є радником шотландського уряду, він 10 років працює у сфері вивчення проблем законодавчого діяльності. Він також має досвід розробки цифрових технологій у сфері залучення в громадянську сферу законотворчості. Отже, будь ласка, Мет, розкажіть нам, що уряд може робити з даними, і як відкриті дані, законодавчі дані, можуть сприяти співпраці між парламентами. Я не знаю, що сталося з моїми слайдами, але зараз я не бачу. Отже, я буду говорити про співпрацю між урядом і парламентом, і як її можна підсилити за використання відкритих даних. Власне, ми займаємося тією розвитком тієї роботи, про яку вчора говорив пан Франсіс Мод. In a constitutional system like the United Kingdom or Scotland, the production of legislation is nearly always a collaboration between government and parliament. Government initiates and drafts the legislation, parliament debates, amends and enacts the legislation. So it's not surprising that good, open legislative data is much more likely to happen if you collaborate between government and parliament. Up on the screen at the moment is the function of my office, the draft bills which are clear, Тобто розробляються законопроекти, які є доступні, які є зрозумілі. І в цьому контексті я маю сказати, що... Here in this discussion, we've already heard it mentioned multiple times. Should that word accessible? It's really the key word here. In the past, I think we thought this simply meant could you get hold of a paper copy of legislation? But that's no longer the case. The way we access legislation has changed. The way we want to engage with legislation has changed. So this, I think, accessibility becomes much more about legislative data and open data. And not simply about the paper record. But I think achieving that is something again that's only going to come about through collaboration between government and civic society. Again, it's only going to come about through collaboration between government and civic society. 
Now, picking up on some of the things covered in Carla's presentation, the example of collaboration that I really want to talk about is particularly about open documents as much as about open data. I want to focus on not just open data about legislation in terms of who voted for what, but I actually want to talk about legislation as open data. The Scottish Parliament already has a good open data portal at data.parliament.scot. It has a large number of data sets relating to legislation, but one of the things that is absent at the moment is the legislation itself. At the moment, uh, that's only available on the website as PDFs. Um, and I think without good legislative data, about the, the legislation itself, um, the value of the other data that you have is lessened. So there's a, a job to be done to improve the legislative data so we can get much more open data out there. Um, but when it comes to open documents, again, on, like what Carlo said, um, the format of the open data becomes far more important. Um, and this becomes an area where it's not just about open data, it's really about open standards and open data. Um, so the whole purpose is to encourage reuse and interoperability. Convenient and open standards really are a must in this area. Um, and in the United Kingdom already, you can be, this can be seen in the new um, already to publish enacted legislation in a comentoso. Um, and via HTML5. Um, next slide, please. Um, so, in this context, the example that I want to talk about um, of a collaborative approach um, is the legislative drafting, amending and publishing program. Uh, too often, in the parliamentary process, the creation of open data is seen as an add-on to an existing process. Over hundreds of years, parliaments have developed complex systems to manage legislation um, to enable the democratic um, process to happen. But those systems Але nearly always treat legislation as a physical document, as a printed piece of paper. We've built digital systems like in the past, but they tend, they tend to be to support systemy, that notion of the paper document. Uh, um, and then at the end of that process, we then try and turn it into something that is digital, that is data. The program that um, I'm talking about here tries to take a different approach. Rather than simply replacing our existing systems with another paper-centric solution, we started from the ground up uh, to build a system that treats legislation as data right from the start. Um, and rather than adopt proprietary standards, we've adopted an open standard, a commentoso, right at the core. So the system that we are building means it's a system that users within government and users within parliament are actually creating open standard data right from the beginning and right through the process. Um, and the system we're building will be entirely access to a browser and hosted in the cloud and so far as possible built from open source components. Um, within the scope of the system, we're bringing together both primary legislation, the bills, the acts, uh, but also secondary legislation, the executive orders, the regulations, where in fact most law is actually made. Um, but this is an ambitious task and simply wouldn't work if we did it in isolation. So right from the start, this has been a collaborative project. First, it's a collaboration between government and parliament. Um, so both government organisations and parliament organisations are involved in this project. Second, it's a collaboration between different constitutional peers. So both the United Kingdom um, as the um, nation state and Scotland as the um, as a part of that nation are working together to produce a system that can be used by both parliaments. Um, and in doing so, the organisations working together are recognising their shared interests in the most of openness. Um, so what does this mean for open data? Well, we think by building a system that's fundamentally about data, we're creating a platform that can produce high-quality open data at all stages of the legislative process. Um, it then becomes trivial to make that data available in open format at any point throughout that process. And by sharing standards throughout the legislative life cycle across different organisations and different types of legislation, we'll enhance accessibility, usability and interoperability. It comes back to the points that Mark made about actually its consistency and be really important here in making it accessible. Um, and we think by contributing to an existing 
this community around the open uh, standards, we are much more able system. to draw on the expertise of the existing marketplace, especially in small and medium-sized enterprises, and to encourage innovation and development. So we are very small and medium-sized enterprises, and to encourage innovation so this program is something that's going to deliver its full fruits in a few, um, well, in a year's time. Um, but we're also looking at other ways to um, expand the open data that we can produce. Um, so I just want to mention briefly a collaborative project that we're working on with universities in Aberdeen and Paris to explore the potential of marking up legislation in legal rule ML, which is a rich semantic markup language that means that one day we'd be able to release much richer open data alongside the legislative process and open up a whole new realm of legislative analysis and tools. I will finish with one thought. Next slide, please. This is something that a colleague said to me when I was preparing this presentation. Legislation data is pretty hard for all but the hardest of hardcore geeks to use. Although I suspect that my society is probably the kind of hardcore geeks we're talking about. But he went on to say, therefore, there is a need for good tooling to open use to a wider community of people who want to do data analytics and legislation. And I agree. And so my final point here is, I think it's sometimes it's not good enough just for governments and parliaments to put out the open data. Sometimes they have to look further about how they can support the tools and the data. And that's part of the, the project that we're working on, that by putting the open standards at the heart of our project, we hope that the tools that we develop for the parliamentary class can more easily become tools for, say, members of parliament, and then the tools that we develop for members of parliament can easily become tools for citizens and civil society. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. So the main steps for Parliament is develop its develop open data policy. It's uh, considered to publish the data on some open data portal. It could be open source portal, as uh, Matt mentioned. It's also about standards. It's also about possibility to download bulk data and to have API internal or external and externally, yes. And, of course, we are talking about interoperability, which uh, was mentioned by Matt. And it's also a question of uh, the work of global legislative uh, working uh, 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 Global Legislative uh, Parliamentary Openness Working Group, which is uh, working in the frame of OGP, and uh, the, the question of open legislative data is also very important in the work of this group. And uh, uh, we all together we will develop some. Uh, papers, some recommendation for parliaments, how to deal with open data and how to publish open data. But uh, I want to also uh, to give a floor to Veronica Kretzu. She is a uh, civil speak about uh, future, yes, and about uh, possibilities and the opportunities. And she is the president of the Open Government Institute from Moldova and the former member of the Civil Society Steering Committee of the Open Government Partners. Uh, she uh, she uh, is very much involved in the implementation and promotion of the principles of open government, open data, open education, information compu uh, uh, communicational technology for democracy, transparency, citizen engagement and participation. And all these, all these could be done thanks to open data. And I will also want to ask uh, Veronica to talk about Moldavian experience in addressing open data and what is it for Parliament. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I know we are still, uh, you know, with a coffee break ahead, but uh, I, uh, I really beg you for a little bit of uh, uh, patience and attention. Thank you, Nadia, very much for giving me the floor, and thank you to the organizers for the invitation to join this panel, but also to join this event. Um, as Nadia was, was saying, I will do make uh, reference to the Moldovan experience in terms of open government uh, 
uh, initiatives that we had and we still have in Moldova. Um, and I'll kind of challenge you to, to look into what is in it for the parliaments, especially parliaments who are at the early stages in, in thinking and coming up with uh, open parliaments, action plans, and the kind of commitments they could embed into, into those initiatives. But before I move into that, let me uh, ask you to um, think about something, and I want to ask uh, uh, the next slide. Does everyone remember the Sleeping Beauty fairy tale? Do you remember the fairy tale? Yes? Do you remember how the fairy tale ended? And if we do a little bit of uh, an imagination exercise, what do you think would have happened is there, if there was no prince in love with a, with a sleeping beauty? Do you imagine? Can you imagine what would the ending of the story be if there was no one in love to, to waken up the, the sleeping beauty? Mm -hmm. The reason I'm, next slide, the reason I'm sharing and asking you to think about it is because I think we have a sleeping beauty right now in Moldova in terms of the open data. But let me first take you through our very, very inspiring and, uh, and interesting story of, uh, of our open data initiative. 2010, 2011, we have a very ambitious governance and transformation agenda. The government of Moldova embarks on a journey to redesign, rethink the public services through each transformation and open data was part of that agenda. The initiative had a very strong support at the highest level in government from the Prime Minister and the State Chancellery. In 2012 we joined OGP and open data remains very high on our OGP action plan, both in the first action plan and then in the uh, in the first and then in the, in the second. 2012 we have the Parliament of Moldova which adopts the law on public sector information reuse. It has been aligned to the EU Directive 98 on the reuse of public sector information. Uh, and of course, the goal of that um, law was to increase the supply, demand and the use of public, uh, of public data. 2014, it was a very important year for the open data life in Moldova, if I can put it this way, because we have the government adopted two important documents, open data concept and then the methodology for publishing and opening up uh, open data. And the, the, the uh, uh, open data by default was at the core of, of uh, that methodology which derived, as you may know, from the G8 uh, uh, Open Data Charter. Uh, what's important is that through the adoption of these provisions, each central public administration authority had to release at least three data sets per month. And I do remember in discussions with different ministries and agencies, they were saying that this is painful, this is, this is really hard. Are you kidding us? I mean, three data sets per month? And uh, there was a state secretary at that point in time, who was saying, if that is painful, if opening up the data is painful, we want pain, we go for pain. Um, so this is how the initiative related to open data, which was led by the government uh, center of Moldova, managed to open up up to 1,000 data sets, and we have a really rich open data portal. And in addition to this, I have to say that the institutionalization of the open data also was possible through um, mandating each uh, public, uh, uh, central public administration authority to have open data coordinators. Imagine each ministry has a person who is specifically designed to be responsible for the open data initiative in addition to the e-governance, in a way, uh, agenda of the, of the government. Next slide, please. However, again, going to the Sleeping Beauty, you know, those, those years, I think, were the golden age for the Moldovan Open Data and Open Government Initiative. Those, those, uh, that age is, is a bit fading away because I personally believe we have a Sleeping Beauty right now. And why is it happening? What has happened? Let's move to the next slide, please. Because there is no high-level political commitment for open data anymore, or the, there is no that strong high-level uh, commitment for open data and open government in general. I remember chasing the government to adopt our third action plan on open government and to convince about the importance of those commitments and to take this agenda very seriously. The momentum, momentum has been lost, and uh, Mr. Um, 
Folks, thank you very much. You mentioned in your intervention earlier this morning about how important it is to keep really the momentum. Because once you lose it, it's really, really difficult and it's painful to bring it back. The momentum has been lost very rapidly because of the several changes in the government and because of the changes of the government itself. We have had probably most uh, turbulent political times in the past couple of years with governments coming and going. And of course, it was very difficult for us, experts working in this field, people in the civil society, to keep updating the new governments again and again about what is it all about, why they need to have open data high on the agenda, along with you know broad open government uh, 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 framework and so on and so forth. There are some other technological issues, and they are more related to a still fragmented ICT infrastructure, where not all the data sets could be collected and stored digitally. Um, uh, there is no uh, searchable list of data, for example, which is available for use in the most disaggregated uh, possible level. There is no sufficient capacity and skills in the public sector to really define, collect and publish the open data on the portal. And yeah, as I said earlier, we used to have open data coordinators. They are still there, but they come and go. There is a very high fluctuation of the public servants in the public service in general, which makes it very complicated to keep training and retraining again people who come into the, into the open data uh, coordinate, uh, coordinator position. All of this, of course, they lead to lack um, of, of demand, or limited demand for open data. Because if you don't have the clear supply mechanism in place, and if if, if you lost the momentum and high-level political commitment, of course, the demand for it is not there because it's not part of the political discourse, it's not part of the play, it's not part of the language that the government or parliament are, are using. Next slide, please. But I still believe that there is a chance now with the Open Parliament initiative, and I know in Moldova, our colleagues at UNDP are doing uh, they are best to uh, initiate Open Parliament initiative, and I think there is a potential with the Open Parliament initiative to wake up our sleeping beauty, maybe. Uh, and this, uh, this would be possible if uh, there is a capacity um, uh, and there is a platform to build capacity amongst the members of the parliament around the practical use and, and the value of open data. Um, and I think this could be done both through addressing the in-service and pre-service uh, uh, institutions that exist at the country level, embedding the curriculum uh, uh, in the curriculum uh, 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 concept and elements related to open data. Someone somewhere needs to train and, and teach our public servants about these emerging uh, aspects. If MPs and, and the Parliament starts co-creating and co-designing the transparency and accountability agenda with its key stakeholders, of course, without civil society, how can we talk about open agenda, open Parliament, uh, when these are the, the key stakeholders that have to be at the core of the process? Um, there is a chance if the Parliament introduces this is a framework for debates around important issues. Yesterday there was a, so many discussions about how debates take place in the parliament and how sometimes, you know, MPs fight and they misbehave. So if there is a clear framework for debates around important issues based on evidence, based on data, based on critical thinking and approaches, then uh, there, is a, there is a chance to, 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 to bring, uh, you know, the sleeping beauty up to life. So there are number of issues and things that could be solved, but most important, if the parliaments lead by example, are futuristic in a way, and they act based on prognosis, based on the data, based on analysis, and not based on historic data, or again, I will refer to Mr. Cox, based on the old way of doing things. If there is a rethink in the way the parliament can run its business, then there is a potential for, for the open data. And last slide, please. Which are the questions I want to leave you up with uh, before we go into the Q&A part. How do we address sustainability of this, of this effort? You have all received the bags yesterday, right? Did you manage to open up this flyer? You looked through it, right? Very impressive. Really impressive commitment, for example, the case of Ukraine. And so we have heard about so, so many 
other parliaments around the world who are trying to do this. But how do we address this initiative sustainable? How sustainably? How do we how do we look into the way our societies will evolve in the next 20, 30 or 50 years? And how do we build these efforts today not to chase the future but to bring the future into, into today? And probably one of the answers is for both the governments and parliaments. Look for innovators. Look for out-of-box thinkers. Work with designers of governments ideators, because they are up there in your society. And the more co-creation you will have in place, the more chances you will have to bring the ideators, innovators, critical thinkers into the way you shape the policies and you shape the, the laws and everything that you do. Because at the end of the day, it's about citizens that you serve, and it's for them that you create and you, and, and you do your work. So thank you very much, Nadia, over to you. Thank you very much. I think it's like a, a lot of motivation and inspiration for, for each and people is assisting this uh, session and each uh, representative of PMO to start doing uh, and uh, to feel this pain of opening data. Uh, but um, I want to mention that um, a legislative openness working group is working on development of toolkit for parliaments and the question of open data as well will be in this toolkit. So I very, I very recommend you to join this legislative openness working group and to be a team of global openness, a parliamentary openness uh, community. So we are open for questions and answers. I, I have a lot of questions, but I think that you as well have a lot of questions. So please be free to ask a question to our speaker, to everyone, or to, 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 to someone directly. Okay. So we, uh, according to the time, yes, we all want to all want to have some coffee. So we will uh, we will take two questions and so we will answer. So please, any questions? Yes, please. And another one. Okay, uh, okay we have two questions. Please. Thank you. Um, I want to also refer to the yesterday words of Lord Maud. Uh, he said it's something interesting that political parties tend to get grow reluctant on openness information as they grow older. That's why I think it's very important and key to stress that the open data should be depoliticized. It should be a technical thing. It should not be used be used or manipulated for political reasons. The other point that I want to make is that whenever I hear raw data, I'm growing suspicious about the real meaning of raw data. Does it mean that when data are published in a better form, are interpreted for somebody's consumption? As an Italian, I would say that there is nothing such as raw data. Let the citizens cook them up for you. Thank you very much. And the next question, please. Yes. Maybe press the button. But we we hear you, so yes. 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 It works. I think it works now. Hello. Yes. 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 Can you elaborate more on Akomantoso? Uh, what does it for and uh, what's the role for in the open data? And uh, mm, yes, explaining more the Akomantoso. And uh, for example, that many countries uh, that they do not have the data portal for their parliament. They are at the beginning of the uh, being open data for their parliament. Uh, the Akomantoso is the first step. 
or, or not? What is, uh, what's your offer for the first step to be to have the uh, data portal for the parliament? Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have, uh, I think, three questions. Yes, about the politicization of open data policy, about raw data and the budget steps for open data, uh, open parliamentary data. So these варианты для платформы для открытых данных. Когда мы обговорили в этом контексте, мы публикуем и методологию, и контекст, и мы реагируем на зворотный звездок. Також і часто густо у нас є коментарі від офіса члена парламенту, і вони кажуть, ви не так це представили, от ми проводимо дискусію, і часто те, як ми представляємо дані, і це можливо, Тому що весь процес відкритий. Ми не редагуємо, ми нічого не редагуємо. І ми не думку свою висловлюємо того, що ми просто представляємо фактаж, те, що було сказано. От і все. Я згоден, що відкриті дані – це технічне питання, але щоб отримати інерційну можливість, так би мовити, рухати це далі. От, скажімо, те, що президент Обама там підписував акт, але інколи ми недостатньо уваги приділяємо адміністрації тій чи іншій темі щоб це відповідало побажанням опублікування даних. Що стосується Акомонтоза, це міжнародний законодавчий стандарт опублікування відкритих документів. Це не мається на увазі відкриті дані. Тут цілий розрив між цими двома речами. І я б не пропонував починати з акомонтоза. Якщо мета ваша публікувати відкриті дані, якщо у вас є стандартні інструменти, відкриті джерела, просто публікуйте відкриті дані. А якщо хочете публікувати документи відкриті, то просто. То Акомонтозо – добрий варіант для вашого використання. Якщо у вас немає технічних засобів, і що ми можемо поговорити під час перерви. Я думаю, що ми можемо продовжити дискусію з виступаючими під час кави. Також маю сказати, що у нас є проєкт Popular, який орієнтований на розробку стандартів для відкритих даних. І ми можемо її працювати з програментами, з спеціалізованими і Дякую.